Watch Newton on another vlog. We're already lost. No. And we're not I even there yet. I know where we are. I just don't know where this truck is. So if we take that road uh, to get to the gravel pit, we turn left. So if you know yes. where it is from the gravel pit. Perfect. We'll Perfect. Perfect. We're also kind of mapping our way so that we can come back through the back roads yeah. just in case we stall or break down or whatever on the on the highway. That would be kind of uh, annoying and potentially a little dangerous depending. Yeah, there's very little traffic on these roads. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, I think there's a way we don't even have to take that highway we just did. There's yeah, another. Go through Calhoun. If oh. we stay on this, it'll take us all the way to 20. Right to 20. And then backtrack. And then back into 50. One mile. Yeah. 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 Look how heaved this road is. Wow. It's like driving in Alaska. Yeah. The roads are like this in Alaska. <laughs> Man, this this is a good see. It's like it's not. It's uh, These springy. These cars were built for really rough roads. Yeah, because back in the day, lots of gravel. Lots of gravel, mud. Some roads. I found a. I got my dad a map. I actually bought it at the Curiosity Inc. store like three years ago. Yeah. I got it for my dad for Christmas. It was a 1947 map of BC, Alberta, Saskatchewan, Manitoba. And his dad and I spent hours looking at that map because yeah. we know what the roads are like now and where the highways go. And then looking back. Um, I mean, he was born in the early 40s, but still, it didn't change much till the mid-50s when things really started going. Yeah. And they really started building roads. But it's it's amazing, because there were roads that had no ditches. They were called grade level. So they just drove across the open plains, and there's no gravel. And if it rained, just mud. mud. Yeah. <laughs> wow. And the so first guy to go out in the mud was like, you know, taking a big risk. Right. So it's basically just a, a, a route rather than a, a road. Yeah. Huh. And it shows a lot of those. I mean, it's that map is zoomed out pretty far. It doesn't show all the, all the roads. But sure. All the main arteries, anyways. I haven't been down this road. No? So I've been down here many <laughs> times. Now it's gravel. Yeah. The, this car can take it. I feel like we should go through Kalahoo. And then, yeah, it'll be easier. Watch the train tracks because you will go flying if you don't slow down. Oh, yeah. I have driven over that. <laughs> yeah. But not fast because I saw it and I'm like, I wonder how bad this is and I slowed down. Because my buddy has some land up here and I've been up there a number of times. Okay. So, years ago, I have a mechanic friend who lives in this town. And uh, I always came from the other way. Oh, yeah. And then I decided to come this way. And I was just driving, speed limit's 80, right? What car were you in? I was in a 2004 Grand Prix or something. Oh yeah. With, yeah. with shot shocks, like no struts in the back, <laughs> just yeah. bottoming out on yeah. anything. Yeah. And I, I was driving just 80, whatever, not speeding. Mm -hmm. And I come to, you're supposed to slow down for train tracks, I guess, but if they don't tell you, like there's, I've driven over some at the speed limit and they're yeah. really good. Yeah. But around here, no. Not this one. I went flying. I definitely got air and like, I, my hands off the steering wheel and everything. Holy this, smoke. This, <laughs> no kidding. Yeah. I, I just like, I smashed that ground a hard and then I laughed my head off with, uh, <laughs> I was with uh, my nephew Dalton at the time and we just could not stop so this laughing. Up right up here. Yes. This track. These train tracks right here. So I haven't been here for a while. So oh, it does. It shows. A, I think it says forty. Oh, it does say forty. <laughs> but that's now. Back then. I don't think it said forty at the time, but forty kilometers. Away. Man, it was. It I, was rough. I lost a hubcap on this, and I did a video. Yeah. On it um, at the railroad tracks going to Spring Lake. Yeah. My dad was following me because I ran out of gas. Yeah. There's no video on that. Um, I was still test driving this car. And was it this car? This car. Okay. 
So. Oh yeah, these are nasty looking. You yeah. could totally catch air off this. Yeah. Oh man. <laughs> yeah. They're rough. Oh yeah. That was anyway, crazy. you lost the crazy. hubcap. Lost the hubcap, and I pulled over. And I said to my dad, I go, did you see this hubcap? Because he was following me in his car. And he goes, no, I didn't see anything. And I, I heard it come off and I saw it beside the car. And then it just disappeared from my view. So I assumed it went straight to the left and down this steep embankment. And I spent an hour in the dark looking. And I'll never forget some guy in like a brand new Corvette. He saw my car sitting there. Yeah. And he stops and he goes, hey, is everything okay, buddy? And I go, oh yeah, I'm, I'm okay. I, I just, I lost a one of a kind upcap. He's like, oh, I'm so sorry, man. Oh, I hope you're fine. <laughs> and like, totally understand. Yeah, right? total car guy. Yeah, it was pretty funny. So then I went the next day and I scoured the trees and I was, I spent another hour and I filmed some of it. And I found it on the other side of the road, about 200 feet from the tracks, like f way farther than I thought. It just it traveled was, a long way. It ways. just, it must have rolled like crazy and then just turned off. Hmm. Yeah. Well, fun fact, guys. I put an Easter egg in my video that came out right after that video that you put out about losing your hubcap. Oh, really? Yeah, I happened to drive <laughs> over those tracks and I put, I just put on the bottom of the screen where Ryan's hubcap flew off or whatever. <laughs> oh, yeah. Just for those who watch both of our channels. If you don't watch both of our channels, you're obviously watching mine. You should also watch his. I'll have a link in the description to uh, to his channel. And uh, as I always do, I highly recommend the... Uh, What's up with this guy? He doesn't like that this thing can only... He, he was following me through town. He was just itching to get by. <laughs> I mean, this has some get up and go. Eh, not compared to a modern vehicle. No, but that wasn't bad. No, I didn't have it at Florida. I was just casually accelerating. Anyway, the Going North series is awesome. What is that? That is new. Oh, jeez. I like that. That house. Okay, I got a story about that house. So I've gone snowmobiling in this area because the Sturgeon River is right here. Yeah. And I was with a buddy. Oh, it's too bad I couldn't get that on camera better. It is a gorgeous house. That's a beautiful house. It's, it's right off the river. It's actually in a nice spot. Yeah. There's, there's a good shot of the river there. So we were snowmobiling down the river, and he had little to, to no experience on a snowmobile, but he was completely kamikaze. It was so funny. <laughs> and I, I was following him because I've always been leading my kids and all that. I can't do that anymore. If I'm with someone else, they have to lead or I lose my mind. I can't be the guy in front. In case. It's just, I, I, I'm done. Because I'm a, every 10 seconds, is my kid alive? Is my kid alive? Right, right. It's still there, right? And so, if I may interrupt you, yeah. you've gone on some adventures where you, you literally almost did die with one of your kids. Yeah, yeah. So like, there's a real reason for that. Canoe trip. Yeah, and you do have a video about that, so people should yeah. check that out. Another good reason to uh, follow your channel. But anyways. I haven't watched that video in like four years. Yeah. Yeah, that's rough. So anyways, we're ripping down that river and it was spring and there was there was open water and we're crossing <laughs> the water. Like, and it was, it was funny because he took a shortcut across a field and I'm watching and, I, and the river is a, about a 10 foot, 12 foot drop. And he's in front of me and he's heading for the river and I'm thinking, dude, stop. <laughs> he goes over the edge, his brake light comes on in midair and he disappears from my view. So I come to the edge, he's facing me and there was three feet of open water. Somehow he missed it and it spun the machine around. He's looking at me all stunned like, what just happened? I'm laughing. Oh man, it's so funny. He's crazy, crazy. A Steve. Okay. Just Mr. Thumb to the bar everywhere we went. I mean, they're not that fast. Those sleds, I, I have the same sled as his. Anyways, I digress. We ended up on the front lawn of that big house because we came around the corner and the whole river was wide open and the only thing we could do is go up off the ice onto that guy's front lawn. Oh. And then the snow was like four feet deep. 
oh. and it was mush. Like oh, it was melting. Oh man, it took like half an hour to turn our sleds around. Because you can't just put them in reverse and back up. It doesn't work that way. So, yeah, crazy adventures. That's funny because Steve is missing his thumb. Are you talking with uh, your son, Steve, or was no, it? No, Steve. It's his. He can still. No, he's only missing the end of his thumb. Okay. Is it his right thumb? I I think it I is. Think it's his right thumb. <laughs> and yeah, so he's just holding the throttle, dude. That's hilarious. That does seem like him. <laughs> oh, he's insane. It's it's really funny. I and we've only been able to go twice. We went with my son and Steve and I two years ago in this area a lot of fun uh he was a little tamer this time <laughs> yeah maybe he learned that's that's funny he didn't have open water it was all yeah frozen. that's funny that you let him lead because your your kids are are your worry but then he's just as much a worry even though he's <laughs> oh, I didn't, i'm like it's it's your party man if you're gonna mess <laughs> yourself up and, i mean he's he's an adult right so. yeah he's an old guy now but uh dude that's that's hilarious and that's totally Steve. Totally Steve. Yeah. It's funny. <laughs> Scrapper Steve. Yeah. I call him Scrapper Steve on my oh, channel. You need a rear bagger for your lawnmower? Oh, yeah. One sitting there. Okay, so we're caught up on the high. So now we're going to have to turn. I, th we, I think we have to. I don't know. It's gravel pits that way now because you, you, you wanted to go a little farther north, so. The gravel pits now. You could be right. This is where the cabins are. Yeah, it is that way, I think. Oh, it's a traffic circle now. Good. That was a terrible oh, intersection, man. It was terrible. Oh. Stop signs on two highways. Years, I mean, this years. is not much of a highway, but that yeah. is. Well, they're both. This is actually fairly busy. Here it is me. busy, but it's. It's single lane and stuff. I, I, I like the traffic circles they're putting in the country. I mean, look at the Humboldt crash. Oh, yeah. If that was a traffic circle? That would not have happened. Not saying they should put one there. I, I don't even want to talk about that. That was a horrible situation. That was. Horrible. Horrible. That was. <clears throat> okay. So, so much for a traffic circle. No, it ain't oh, a traffic Oh, they're still working on it, so this is temporary. Dude, they, they paved the temporary way nicer than yeah. they do. <laughs> <laughs> I love Alberta. It's temporarily it's like worse. There's a railroad track here. See how high that is? Yeah. Well, that's what the highway used to be. So there used to be an old guy, we used to call him a hermit. He had a shack over here. Now it's a, looks like a lumber yard. They build and these he, cabins. Yeah. Oh, okay. He got flooded out so many times. Yeah. We go to visit my brother up at Cold Lake and we'd always drive by here on the way. And I I don't know when he moved out, 